Take a moment and look at this man. He lives in Asia. His family has lived in Asia for tens of thousands of years, longer than most civilizations have existed. But if you showed his face to a random person on the street, most people would not say he is Asian. They might say African. They might say mixed. Some wouldn't know what to say at all. Now look at this man. This is what most people imagine when they hear the word Asian. Straight hair, light to medium skin, a familiar face. So here's the uncomfortable question almost no one asks. Why do some of the oldest Asian populations look nothing like what we now call Asian? And what if the answer exposes a part of human history that was ignored, not because the evidence wasn't there, but because it didn't fit expectations? For a long time, Asia was explained using a very simple story. Humans left Africa. They moved east. Over time, they slowly changed. According to this idea, the farther east people moved, the more Asian they became. This story felt neat. It felt logical. And most importantly, it matched what people thought they were seeing. So when early explorers and scientists encountered dark-skinned people in Southeast Asia, Oceania, and island regions, they didn't question the story. They tried to force these people into it. If someone looked dark, they assumed Africa. If someone had curly hair, they assumed Africa. If someone didn't fit neatly, they assumed something went wrong. No DNA, no genome testing, just visual guesses turned into academic conclusions. Across Asia and nearby regions, several populations stood out. Papuans from New Guinea, Ada groups from the Philippines and mainland Southeast Asia, who were even called Negritos by the Spanish that encountered them. The Andaman Islanders in the Bay of Bengal, Aboriginal Australians. These groups shared visible traits, dark skin, curly or tightly coiled hair, facial features unfamiliar to East Asia. Because of this, they were often treated as Africans who migrated there recently, relics of ancient human groups, or outsiders to real Asia. Some textbooks describe them as isolated or primitive, while others quietly avoided explaining them at all. But these populations weren't rare accidents. They were widespread, they were ancient, and they weren't going anywhere. Everything changed when genetic technology improved. Scientists stopped relying on single markers or surface traits and began analyzing entire genomes. When they tested these populations, they expected to find something familiar. They expected to find recent African ancestry, or at least recent African mix. Well, they didn't. Instead, they found something far more surprising. These populations clustered with other Asians genetically and were further apart from Africans than even Europeans and Middle Easterners, who look less similar to Africans than these people do. But they didn't cluster close with Chinese, Koreans, or Japanese either. They formed their own deep branches, branches that split tens of thousands of years before modern East Asians even existed. This was the moment the old story and the narrative collapsed. Scientists needed a new term to describe what they were seeing. They called it Basal East Eurasian Ancestry. That sounds complex, but here's what it really means. Imagine a tree. The trunk is humanity after leaving Africa. The first major branch are basal Eurasians, who are ancestors to all modern non-Africans. Then there is major split into two big branches called basal West Eurasian and basal East Eurasian. The first big branches split early, and then each branch splits into further smaller branches. And the first branches of the Asian branch lead to populations like Papuans, Aboriginal Australians, Atus, Andaman Islanders. Then other younger branches split and lead to modern East Asians, modern Southeast Asians, Northern Asians. Basal simply means closer to the root. These populations are not side notes. They are part of Asia's earliest foundation. Here's the part that feels backwards to most people. Modern East Asians are not the original Asian form. They are a later development. Their shared traits, facial structure, skin tone, hair type, formed after these ancient populations had already split off. That means the face we associate with Asian today is not ancient, but rather a younger variation of Asians. This alone changes how we understand Asian history. So why do these ancient Asians look so different? Because appearance changes fast. Skin color adapts quickly to sunlight. Hair texture can remain stable for thousands of years. Facial features can persist when populations stay isolated. Dark skin evolved many times in Africa, in South Asia, in Southeast Asia, in Oceania. Dark skin does not mean African ancestry. It means adaptation. 
because these branches of ancient Asians migrated from Africa into a similarly tropical climates within Asia, their genetics did not have a need to transform into lighter skin that occurs as a result of reduced sunlight in northern climates, more epicanthic eye folds that are meant to protect against harsh winds of the north, and straighter hair. The similarity between Africans and these ancient Asians is visual, not genetic. They look alike for different reasons. After humans left Africa, not everyone took the same path. One major group followed a southern coastal route. They moved along shorelines, they crossed islands, they adapted to tropical environments. Some reached Southeast Asia, New Guinea, Australia. Very early after initially leaving Africa, these populations settled fast and stayed isolated. Later, another wave moved north and east, forming what we now call Neo-East Asians, or New East Asians. Two paths, two timelines, one continent. Isolation matters. Populations that remain isolated keep older traits due to not receiving new admixtures. Papuans and Aboriginal Australians stayed separated from later migrations for tens of thousands of years. That isolation preserved. Ancient genetic lineages, older physical traits, unique adaptations. They didn't fail to evolve. They simply evolved differently and did not need to adapt to colder climates and select for features that would make life in the cold easier. The reason they became the minority of the Asian continent is because Neo-East Asian groups further up north ended up developing large-scale agriculture much faster when they moved slightly more south to more fertile lands. Then, due to their population sizes exploding, they expanded even more south and began dominating much of the eastern half of the Asian continent. However, it's not like both groups stayed completely separate from each other and didn't mix. Some people, for example, mistake the dark skin found in Indians and Southeast Asian people like Filipinos, Cambodians, and Thais with some sort of recent mythic African admixture that arrived through sea trade, but it is not that. It is actually a blend of those old Asian lineages into modern ethnicities. Indians carry a significant amount of ancient ancestral South Indian admixture, and these people are one of those ancient Asians. The same can be said for people in Southeast Asia and surrounding islands. They are a blend of new East Asians and old East Asians, which is why they can often have much darker skin and curlier hair than people like Koreans or Mongolians. So why didn't science accept this sooner? Because early anthropology was built on racial categories. Scientists expected Africans to look one way, Asians to look another. Anything that broke those rules was treated as an exception. Genetics forced a correction. DNA doesn't care about categories. It tells history the way it actually happened. Why didn't this happen with Europeans? Some of you will ask if that happened with Asians. How come it didn't happen with Europeans? Why do we not have native European populations that resemble Africans, and we don't have people of mixed ancient and new European ancestry either. That is because Europe as a whole is much smaller than Asia, and is entirely more further north. It does not have tropical areas, and borders regions where humans also were not able to retain that phenotype. Although the oldest large population of Europe known as Western hunter-gatherers did have darker skin than modern Europeans, it wasn't much darker, and they did not have curly hair. There was also a massive natural selection for lighter skin, and blue eyes in Northern Europe, and Northern European groups spread out through Europe on a massive scale multiple times, with Celts, Germanic tribes, Vikings, and then Slavs affecting the mix in areas south of them. So when someone asks, why did ancient Asians look different? The answer is simple, because Asia was already diverse long before modern Asians existed. If this changed how you see human history, leave a comment and subscribe.